Hey, Dad, Fred, what are you doing? Man, look at this. Um, I, I bricked my Retroid Pocket Mini. I'm stuck in this loop here, uh, fast boot. I was trying to install a Linux build, and man, I got myself stuck. Watch, look at this. No matter what I do, every mode, everything, it just goes in a circle, an infinite circle, back over and over again. So what am I supposed to do? Well, guess what, deadheads? Mr. Gamma to the rescue. Stay tuned for our guide on how to unbrick your Retroid Pocket Mini. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, so <clears throat> to start off first, you're going to want to download these assets right here. They are at the bottom of the screen of this guide that Gamma has put on his GitHub. And you do want to download each one of these together. You Don't try to just download just the first thing. You need all four parts. So just click each one to get the download process going, and then they'll be in your downloads folder. Once they're in your downloads folder, then you need to use a program like WinRAR to uh, unzip and extract them. So we'll go up here to our downloads folder. All right, so we have it here. So I'm using WinRAR, so I'm just going to right click and I'm going to just open. It's going to pop up our WinRAR box and then we're just going to extract and you'll extract to the same folder that you're in. You click OK. It's going to say that because it, I've already done this. So we'll just say yes to all. Let it extract, and then it's going to build the folder like you need it with all parts that are included. And now that you have this is downloaded, you're ready to start on with the next step. See here, and again, we're going to unzip and install the Qualcomm USB drivers. So we'll go ahead and extract and um, get those drivers in there. And then you'll go here and run this exe. I like to run it as an admin. I don't know that you need to do that. Um, you go ahead and hit run. Computer's going to ask you, um, do you want to install it? You're going to see a pop-up window um, while the drivers are installing. You give it a few seconds to install, and it should come back and be no issue. And we now have <clears throat> the drivers installed. So next step, we're going to go over here and we're going to install the QPST, the Qualcomm Product Support Tools. So back to the main folder here that we've downloaded. And we do have the Qualcomm um, Product Support. So we're going to go to QPST Win 2.7 Installer. And if you see right here, we need to unzip this as well. So let's extract it. We'll extract it. We now have it extracted, and we're going to go in into this installer, and then we're going to go to the CXE and install it. And then once that program is installed, we're going to run the EXE installer in the tools, which includes the QFill application. So once that's installed, next, after installing the QPST, launch the QFill application from the Start menu. So if you go to the Start menu, you should have QFill on the menu here now. And we should have QFill. You may have to go in here and go to All Apps if it's not showing up. And go down in your app tray to the QFill, QPTST. And here's your QFill. So you're going to run that. It is going to open up this file right here. So you'll have this open. In QFill, you're going to choose the flat build. So you'll choose the flat build right here. Set the programmer path to the file and extracted firmware package. So you're going to browse. You're going to go to that package. You're going to pick this right here, uh, this light LPL. So you'll open that right there. Um, and then at the bottom right, make sure that it says UFS down here. So if you have those set, then you're ready to go to the next stage. Okay, so at this point, you're going to connect your Retroid Pocket Mini to your PC. Um, you want to make sure that you are 
excuse me, that you are uh, connecting it <clears throat> with the USB cable and you are going to, and make sure you connect it with the machine off. You are going to press and hold the power, the volume and volume up simultaneously until the device boots into EDL mode. Now, when I did this, I held all three buttons down and it took about 25 seconds for it to actually get into that mode. And the way that I knew it went into that mode is because this screen up here would suddenly say, um, please select an existing port. So basically have this window open while it's connected to your Retroid Mini Pocket through USB, hold the volume up, volume down, and power button simultaneously, and just keep holding and pressing that until you see up here where it asks you to select a port from the list. Once you do select that port from the list, then you're going to go to your uh, tools and you're going to click on Partition Manager. Uh, and once you click on Partition Manager, um, then you will be able to click OK on the programmer confirmation pop-up, wait a few seconds for the partition to load, and then do not modify any partitions here. The next step, you're going to go back to your folder and you're going to open up from the folder your QFIL Helper EXE. So you're gonna go ahead and run that program. And when you have that program open, you're going to press number five, flash files from flash folder. You'll first be asked to confirm if you wanna flash the headers. Warning, you're about to flash the headers. Choose option C to continue. You're then gonna be asked it again. You're about to flash these files, okay? And then you're going to choose C again. The overall flashing process will begin and may take up to 20 minutes. Ignore any errors during the flashing until the process completes, at which point a success message will confirm the flash. You'll see this screen. Once you've seen this screen, Deadheads, you are now good to go. Disconnect it from the computer. Reboot it by holding the power button for up to 60 seconds until you see the Retroid logo. The device will boot into Android Recovery, and then in that menu, you're going to use the volume buttons to select Factory Data Reset and press the power button to confirm. After the reset, the device will reboot into the newly flashed firmware, and you will see back to the original screen that you saw when you first got your Retroid Pocket Mini to set up Android again. I want to thank Gamma for this guide. I want to thank Gamma for creating these tools. And I hope that you guys, if you use this, will be able to successfully recover your um, factory image from your Retroid Pocket Mini. I do not know, but I do hope that this means that if we go to Re uh, Android 13 and want to go back and downgrade, that this will give us a way to downgrade back to Android 10. So I'm going to see if I can verify that. Anyways, guys, I hope this guide has been useful and helpful for you. Remember to leave me a comment uh, in the comments, or if I missed a step or something you think should be there, put it in the comments for future viewers. I hope that if you're here because you have bricked your Retroid Pocket Mini, that you're able to recover it and game again. Remember to love your hugged ones and hug your loved ones because tomorrow is never promised. We'll see you next time, Deadheads. Dead Fred out. Thank <laughs> you.